Greetings, Apostoli del Benessere de Bianchi, Apostles for White Wellbeing, from the Ninja Blue Atsuro. Hope everyone's doing well, all my warmest and best. Saturday, August 5th. Had a hard week of work last week, so it's been about a week between videos here. And right now I want to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of Western kind. We definitely have strengths and we definitely have weaknesses. By the way, credit to the great one reptile for making and sending me this Eindelin or what have you. And WG right there, no white guilt. Any way you can display this stuff for yourself primarily and others is great. I prefer the in your face direct way. But any stage, any level, any step in the process is good. Strengths and weaknesses of Western kind. With some examples, mainly about South Africa here. The strength of Western kind, I would say, is basically building civilization. Building the greatest civilizations the world has ever seen, as far as I know. There's a lot of things that go into that. And all those things that go into building a great civilization are strengths of Western kind. Looking at nature, trying to understand things constantly, trying to figure things out. Science, mathematics, medicine, art, every area, every facet of life and nature possible. White Westerners have always wanted to figure it out and achieve greatness in every category. Constantly pushing forward, constantly improving to new heights, always looking for ways to improve, never settling and saying, this is good enough, always trying to go farther, higher, etc. We get over the horizon to the next frontier, the next great accomplishment. Okay, that's great. Not too long after, we want to go to the next one. We want to see what's over the next horizon constantly. That's why we, as a as a people have improved so much and so far over time. Understanding things, seeking knowledge, figuring out how things work, why things are the way they are in nature, and then using that knowledge to improve things, to build things, there's a lot to that and leads to very great accomplishments. That desire to learn, to understand and improve constantly leads to monumental accomplishment after monumental accomplishment, new height after new height. Absolutely amazing. Our weakness 
as we can probably all also agree with, is defending our civilization. We can build great civilizations, but we have a lot of trouble defending them. That's what I would say Western kind these days is really not good at, at all. We used to be in ancient times because I think ancient people understood the nature of the world better in that it's a jungle out there. And there's always gonna be outsiders trying to take what you have, what you build, if it's worth anything. And we built such great things that there's always people after it. Ancient Westerners knew that you had to protect it and fortify those boundaries very well. Nowadays, it's the opposite. Totally forgotten that, totally unable to defend in many cases. Our weakness nowadays is, un is, is understanding, lack of understanding that different peoples, different races are not like us at all. <laughs> They don't care about improving things. They don't care about learning things. A lot of them, they just want to survive. And if they're surviving, that's pretty much good enough. And they will go for, get whatever they need, need to survive by any means necessary. Stealing it, at other people's expense if they have to. And they'll, they'll improve in the sense of trying to take as much as they can and acquire wealth and resources, but that's about it. It's all for the purpose of survival. Just getting more to ensure they are sitting pretty. Not like Westerners where we want to improve for the sake of improving for the sake of making things better. Contributing to the world as a whole, to humanity as a whole, nobody else cares about that. They want things for themselves and that's it. Jungle mentality is most of the world. Therefore, obviously, great accomplishments, great civilizations, great things built, acquired, whatever, have to be protected. We have, we have built some of the greatest stuff in the world, some of the most alluring stuff for people to go after. If you're sitting on a pile of treasure, you gotta know people are gonna be targeting you as number one to steal from, because you have, you have the gold, you have the top, the top stuff. The golden goose, so to speak. If you have the most valuable stuff, you're gonna be the number one target. So this makes sense, but a lot of people are people now completely out of touch with this. Don't have a clue. It's the jungle outside of Western civilization and even inside Western civilization to Still a lesser degree, I would say, now, because of all the jungle creatures that have been let in. But it's still not as bad as most of the world out there. So what do I mean? A couple of examples of not defending 
not being able to defend, not wanting to defend, being clueless, being confused, being mentally ill. That's what anti-whiteism is. It's a mental illness. It's a mental disease. And it can only be cured with mental methods. How do you change someone's mental health? Their mental state, their mental well-being from poor to good by changing their thinking. The only way to cure mental illness is to change people's thinking. How do you change people's thinking? By changing the words they use. That's why the key is changing the words we use. On a widespread level. The words that must be used are anti-white, most importantly, Western kind, emphasizing that Western kind is the victim, the most victimized group, race on planet Earth. And then no white guilt. Those words, phrases, must become the widespread norm. When those are as normal as the anti-white narrative words, like the R word, prejudice, etc. When these words become normalized, anti-white, western kind, no white guilt, that's when change will happen, not before that. So what are some examples and what do I mean by ineffective ways that our people use to try to defend or just show they are inept and unable to defend? First of all, Henrik Palmegren of Red Ice Radio put out a tweet last week about Charlie Kirk that I do not have handy right now. Charlie Kirk apparently went on a rant about black people, kind of deriding them, saying that they only got they've only gotten anywhere to where they are um, because of white people. White people is the only reason that blacks have achieved anything. It's because white people did the work for them. Gave black people positions that are higher, status that is higher. They were all just lifted up by whites, which I would agree with. Blacks have really not achieved anything on their own. They've been, they've, they've, they've done it on the backs of white people and with the favors of the many favors and financial gifts, gifts of anti-white hat people. But this is not what should be talked about. Charlie Kirk saying blacks have only gotten where they are because of white people working, giving things to them, whatever. That's true, but that's not what should be talked about. Why? Because that does not help us white people at all.
This is incorrect, ineffective stuff. It kind of fits into the anti-white narrative that whites are just disliking non-whites, in this case, blacks. And pointing that kind of thing out, that they've just benefited from us, really just accomplishes nothing. Just points out how victimized we've been. in an ineffective way. And most importantly, the emphasis should not be on blacks or any other non-white. The emphasis should be on whites. Charlie Kirk should have pointed out whites have been victimized by blacks and any other non-white you want to talk about. Whites have been and continue to be victimized by anti-whites of all varieties, all non-whites varieties and whites as well. Giving, giving an example of that is okay as long as we emphasize us and that we have been victimized by anti-whites of whatever variety you want to talk about. So he put the emphasis on non-whites, darks, saying, look, they've just benefited off the backs of whites. Well, that doesn't do anything for us. Need to say that whites have been victimized by anti-white blacks in this case. One of many examples. Using the term anti-white, talking about our victimization, that's the key. Another example. Lana Loktef put out a tweet. saying this is the South African communist leader who just called for killing white farmers again. Obviously, you should not call them communists. That accomplishes nothing. They should be called anti-white. This is the South African anti-white leader, obviously who just called for killing white farmers. Again, anyone who's calling for the killing of white farmers, again, is not communist, they are anti-white. That's what they need to be called. Otherwise, this is just spreading doom and gloom. If you call them anti-white, it actually helps us. She's referencing a tweet by this South African communist anti-white leader, apparently stirring up white farmer murders again, yet again, continuing, it's been going on for a long time. This person, leader in South Africa, black anti-white, I assume is named Julius Selo Malema. I guess, makes a tweet that says, anti-Semitism is hatred, prejudice, or hostility towards Jews. Some of our biggest financial donors are Jewish, and we love them, blah, blah, blah. So apparently that's the South African leader talking about how much they love Jews because of how much money they give them. Lana pointing out that this same Jew, money-loving, South African, non-white leader is <clears throat> stirring up the killing of white farmers again. Not very effective as it 
as she put it. Those Jews in this case that are giving South Africa money should be called anti-whites or anti-white Jews. That's what Lana should have clarified. The Jews that donate to South Africa that Julius Malema is referencing are obviously radically anti-white to the point that they're funding the killing of white farmers still. The Jewish donors are anti-white to South Africa. Julius Malema, the South African leader, dark non-white, I assume, is obviously anti-white because he loves these Jewish anti-whites that fund the murder of whites there. That's what this leader of South Africa, this dark non-white, should be called anti-white, as well as the Jewish donors, anti-white. They're all anti-white. The word anti-white was not used in this entire thing. Lana calls them the leader communist and then references the tweet from this anti-white monster in South Africa. And all that person's talking about is anti-Semitism, Jews, blah, blah. That is all anti-white narrative stuff. All it does is help anti-whiteism, the words that are used. No words were used that help us in this. Was anti-white used? No. Was Western kind used? No. Was no white guilt used? No. Referencing that the farmers being attacked are white is, is a start, but it's not enough to emphasize that we're being victimized at the very least would have been nice then the real example is that I want to get to is someone that made a comment about this that I dialogued with and this, this is a South African person that just a white Afrikaner that reveals our weaknesses. Uh, so many of our kind's ineptitude to defend. This is a guy named Pieter Botha. He made an initial comment
I can find it, my apologies. I think this person actually just deleted right as we speak um, the whole dialogue. This is the idiot, idiocy, idioticness of so many of our people now. This there's a guy Pieter Botha. He made a comment about South in response to Lana's South Africa tweet. They're going after white farmers yet again, and this white Afrikaner says, well, blah, blah, blah. Um, something about they want money, they want the farm land. And I said, no. They're not going after white farmers because they want farmland <laughs> or money or resources. They're, de <laughs> they're openly declaring as they have forever now that they intend to keep killing white farmers, people. So my response was no, they're doing this because this is happening because South Africa is controlled by anti-whites who want to erase white people. That's why it's happening, because the anti-whites have power. What they're doing is erasing, murdering white people. They're not going after farmland or money or crops or any other resource or whatever. And that's kind of what he was saying. He's South African, white, Afrikaner there. Still doesn't have the cojones or the wherewithal to call it what it is. And he went on, di on a dialogue with me and said that he's his name, Botha, is descended from the first president of South Africa the first Africana president and he said oh man watch out I'm a descendant of this guy and he was just arguing with me combative with me and I'm like dude I'm I'm on your side I'm trying to help you here and it was only after I mentioned this simply that anti-whites control South Africa and they're trying to erase white people only after that did he acknowledge, yes, there's white genocide, he's against it. Well, good, he should be. I am against it too. I'm on your side, brother. All he wanted to do was argue with me. And he went back and forth. And I was going to show it, but he apparently deleted it from my view, I guess. He showed me the picture of this president that he's descended from. Looks like a very honorable man back in the day and gave me these longer responses about history and how whites have always been victimized. And I'm like, dude, yes, I know. That's the point. You, <laughs> your people, our people have never been good at defending pretty much the whole history there. He just, just kept proving my point, thinking he was somehow arguing with me. Telling me how much whites have been defeated in history and how they went to camps and how his great grandfather or whatever was one that helped re take them back to Europe when they were being put in camps, you know, hundreds of years ago, a long time ago. And I just said, yes, this just confirms, affirms what I'm saying. You over there, wh whites over there have been victimized for a long, long time. You're still getting massacred because of what I'm trying to tell you, Pieter. You are inept and not able to defend. <laughs> That's why you have been massacred and why you keep getting massacred. Because he just wants to get involved in these silly conversations with a brother that's trying to help. 
like me. This is the problem. And I just kept replying to him, dude, not, you know, that's great that you descended from the first president of South Africa, but <laughs> it really doesn't matter right now. It really doesn't help us at all to say, I'm the descendant of blah, blah, blah. That just points out how <laughs> far down we've come and how much we've been massacred since then. <laughs> and, just, and I just kept saying, dude, we need to defend, and the first step in defending is calling out the anti-whites that run South Africa. Call them anti-white. They're calling for the open murder of white farmers, people, yet all white people, not just farmers. Yet again, for the millionth time, can't get any more clear than that, they're anti-white. It's the very least you can do. I mean, they're just openly declaring, let's go murder white people in South Africa for so long now. And South Africans still cannot muster up the gall to just call them anti-white. When they show their anti-whiteism as much as they possibly can over there. And in many other parts of the West too. I've, t I've met many South Africans in my travels. They're just a bunch of pansies. They can't say anti-white to save their life. They couldn't stand up for themselves to save their life. It's very obvious. Even when they're being massacred, literally. Well, okay. You don't want to defend when you're being massacred openly, then it's going to keep continuing. Until we use these words. Anti-white, most importantly. He just right now deleted this stuff. Unbelievable. Stupidity and cowardice, folks. Use the word anti-white. Things will not change until this becomes the norm.